and just relax. Right hand goes right to here, left hand goes here, and just relax and just be there. Good for you, all right? Now I'll take my bridle. If you leave me, you're gonna be uncomfortable. Yeah. Left ear's on me, left eye, look at that. So the left brain's thinking about me. Invitation's still on. But if you leave me, but then people wanna pet me. I'm just sure they wanna pet me. If you leave me, I'm gonna make it uncomfortable. Do you see what I tried to do? If the, if your mule doesn't like to be touched, would you still approach her or him and rub at him? Yes. Okay. Now, there's a lot of mules, folks, that, that are, they were old type of mules that we used to have. And uh, shoot, they, um, they, they just wanted to go to work. They didn't want to be pets. And so, yeah, I'd still pet them. Uh, I can tell you what I found recently is that some of these mules that don't want to be petted and stuff actually have some type of uh, allergy deal. I forget what it is that the veterinarians tell me about, but there was something about their coat and stuff. If their coat was rough, they're usually the harder ones to brush and, and deal with. But I think I always thought a lot of it was just the old type of mule. Okay. Shoot, mine's rough coated. Yeah, you see? Should I get her tested? Yes, I would. Okay. Yeah. And there's stocks for that. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yes, there is. Yes, ma'am. And if yeah. you get a difference on your mule, we'll, we'll know. She's about uh, six months in. Okay. So I've got, I've got uh, three more months of shots. Okay. Okay, now when I put the bridle on, I want the mule to keep his head down, and I'm going to take this finger right here. And I'm going to take, and I'm going to rub the bars of the mouth. And I'm going to rub the bars. This finger is inside the bars right now rubbing. Feeling good. I want, the, oh, the mule says, oh, that really feels good, Steve. Some more. Rubbing, 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 rubbing. It's okay, sweetheart. It's okay. Easy now. Right ear first, left ear second. Okay. Steve, yeah. Why the right ear is not the left one first? Good question. I'm good for you. Why didn't the rest of you think of that? Okay. What I don't want to do as a trainer, I don't want to make one thing correct and create five or six other things. Like I was talking to you earlier about the, the lady with the, the donkey. She did a bunch of good things. Thank you. She did a bunch of good things, but the one bad thing that she did that kind of... <laughs> That kind of messed up everything else was she had the saddle sitting on top of the scapula. So when I put a bridle on, if I put the bridle on the left ear first, I got a chance of pushing her head away from me. But if I do the right side, I got a chance of bringing her head to me. You got that? So when I put a bridle on, I want her head down. I want her quiet when I put the bridle on. Now my mom was four foot six. So all my apprentices and this sort of thing, I always taught them. I said, take and Teach your mule to drop the head so that when you drop the head, they'll pick up the bridle. Now, what happened there? I've got two places back in here at the nerves. That when I touch those two places in the nerves, they ought, that makes them uncomfortable. What do they want to do? They want to get away from you. When they've been braced a lot, where they've had their teeth bumped, they've been pulled down a lot, they will tighten all five major neck muscles. Now, get your neck muscles in your mind. The one across the crest of the neck, one that runs along the center of the, of the neck, and one that runs along the esophagus, and the two in the throat. Now, I want you to see this. This bit is hanging all the way down, bumping the front teeth. Can everybody kind of see that? It's all hanging all the way down, bumping the front teeth. That's how low that bit is. Good for you, yeah. She'd gotten quiet for a little bit there, but then I put a little stress on her. You gotta remember, this is the mule that had $4,000 worth of work and $2,000 worth of tooth, teeth done. Now she just picked up the bit and she's packing it. Now she says, I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna kind of move it around until I can get quiet, until I can figure out where's the most comfortable. 
While she's doing that, this throat latch is very important, folks. When you put a throat latch on, always make sure it's loose. If it's too tight of a throat latch, they will tend to be stiff and they will tend to not bend, break at the pole because the throat latch is pestering them. So I always like to have a good, a good long throat, throat latch and not very tight. There she goes packing the bit again, picking it up and holding it. Now this is something we're not going to do overnight. This is something I'm going to let her pack this bit back about three times and then I'm going to quit her. I'm done. But on top of that, you've got to remember she's had all the, the, the dental problems, okay? Now, let's just kind of fast forward just a little bit. And let's say she gets quiet here. Wait for just a second. Oh, let's, let's go do this here. There, she gets quiet again. That's number two. After number three, I would pull the bridle off and then I would uh, come back in four or five days or the next day. You don't have to train every day. And then I would put it back in there again. Okay, during, the question is, during the time when I'm packing the bit, am I not riding in that time? No. Okay, now here's the deal. I want you to take uh, your brakes on your truck and I want you to loosen them all up so you got no brakes at all and then I just want you to go drive. It's the same thing. Because you see, here it is. If the mule is not comfortable with the bit and if the mule is not responding to the bit, why go out there and have a helicopter ride to the, hel to the hospital? Why? The riding, folks, is not the important part. It's getting there safely is what the important part is. Unfortunately, when you go to buy a meal, what do you do? You see, everybody's moving. I watch guys ride up and down the road as if that was a big deal, you know? No, in a 10-foot circle, in a 10-foot circle, I want to see them turn on the forehand. In a 10-foot circle, I want to see them side pass. Whoop, over here, come on, babe. Right there, good for you. Let's try it. I want to see you side pass, good girl, like that. In a 10-foot circle, I want to see them turn on the hindquarters. So we'll step back and go. Oop, I just do it again. Step back and go. Good. They naturally already do it. We just got to have the cue to do it. Now, if I use my hands, then right here, that front end stays in place and the back end comes over. All I'm doing is touching right here. Now, eventually, the front end completely stays in place and the back end goes around. That's my ultimate goal. But for now, if I can just get her to do that, good. Okay, now she's packing a bit again, okay? So, we'll take, and step over here. When you buy a mule, you buy disposition first. Confirmation second. Training third. Color, who cares? Okay, because the color doesn't make the mule. Makes some of you girls cuter, I guess. Us guys uglier, okay?